Hi, hey, this is Lucas Markward with the Thoroughbred Daily News. It was a wet, dreary day at Churchill Downs Monday. One of the few horses to hit the track after Sunday's big work day was Uncle Cy, who galloped for trainer Gary Contessa. Contessa said the New York bred was getting a little bit stir-crazy after shipping down from New York. He really needs to gallop. He's been full of himself this morning. He's been mm -hmm. in that stall tearing it up, so I uh, decided to gallop him, and he looked great. Take the edge off him a little. He's a laid-back dude. I think he's excited to be here. I think, you know, not not in a wrong way, in a good way, yeah. he's excited to be here. I think a lot of things, you know, he was like standing at the front. Somebody over there had loud music on the other day, and he's like this. He's like, wow, <laughs> this is cool, and he's got his ears up like that. I mean, I think this is uh, exciting him a little bit, so we'll keep the edge off him by training him a little. Uncle Sai has raced on a wet track just once, finishing second by a head in his debut at six furlongs, but Contessa made a third-person plea for rain on Saturday. Gary Contessa <laughs> is rooting for a sloppy track, but <laughs> as a horseman, mm -hmm. I'm rooting for a beautiful day, for a great day of racing for Churchill and more people and the fans and everything, but if that track was sloppy, that would absolutely benefit me. I hope it's a beautiful day all day right until the race before our race, and then let all hell break loose. I'm very happy to be here, <laughs> I can tell you that, but I've had a lot on my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. My my moment is when we get over there on Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm enjoying it, but my I'm constantly on top of what's going on with the horse, trying to keep everything par. Yeah. You know, we, you watch year after year after year, you see major horses dropping out the yeah. week before I mean, the we derby. We're just trying to get them there. Mm -hmm. We're trying, you know, of course he looked at me this morning, coughed one time. You know, th <laughs> this stuff happens, you know, it's like, so we're, we're trying our best to get them there. Uncle Si is coming off a fifth place try in the Wood Memorial when he got off to a slow start. Contessa explained what happened and why he's adding blinkers for the derby. We drew a lousy post position in the Wood and social inclusion was directly to our right. And like I've been thinking for a while, this horse needs blinkers. You know, he gets distracted by certain things. So you see social inclusion rears up in the gate, giving him a hard time in the gate. He was bad in the paddock, bad in the gate. He was washed out in the paddock. And when he gets to the gate, he's really carrying on in the gate, social inclusion. My horse looks at him, looks back, looks at him again, looks back. The horse rears up just a hair, comes down, uh -huh. my horse looks at him, they spring the gate, and I'm last. Now I'm post 10 and I'm last. I'm thinking I'm gonna be right behind because social inclusion stalking him, and he got left in the gate. So we put blinkers on him, and we're looking, I think this horse is much more focused and much more serious about his business with the blinkers on. So the Wood Memorial kind of iced that for him that he was gonna be wearing blinkers. Yeah. And I know everybody brings up Palace Malice. You know, <laughs> last year Palace Malice blinkers on, pew, 45 half. I don't think this horse's mental state is going to hurt him and make him do something crazy like that. This horse mentally is very cool, and he does whatever the rider asks him to do. And we've done a lot of due diligence with him as far as rating him behind horses and getting him used to the blinkers. I think he's going to handle it like any other day and I don't think it'll be a problem. Contessa trains Uncle Sire for Chip McEwen's Wounded Warrior Stables. McEwen named the stable in honor of the service veterans who have been wounded in battle and dedicates part of his winnings to the cause. And I don't think our country does enough for wounded warriors. I think we kind of have a tendency to forget about our guys after they get back and these guys to, be, to have an opportunity to do something for a wounded warrior mm -hmm. is, blows my mind. I, I, I love it. I love it. I really yeah. do. So I think it's I think it's a good thing. And uh, I and Chip McEwen is one of the most benevolent guys I know. And he's mm -hmm. going to bring. I mean, he's bringing double and triple amputees here oh, on wow. Saturday. And he's bringing a family who lost their son recently in Afghanistan. And you know, he's a good he's a good man. He was on a plane coming back from somewhere one day, and the pilot when they landed said, "Could everybody remain seated? We have." a special person who needs to get off the plane first. In walks a father, a woman holding two babies, and they go to the back of the plane and they get this obviously head trauma, wounded warrior off the plane. And he's got a wife and two little babies and he's you know on a different planet. He's really bad, severely injured. And that changed Chip forever. I know you, he booked 20 rooms at the, hotel, the Sheridan down here. He's bringing in a bunch of wounded warriors to treat him to the race. So, you know, he's a great guy. He really is amazing. I, I sit on the board of a couple of charities, one being a homeless shelter upstate New York. Um, and Chip McEwen is one of our biggest, uh, one of our biggest contributors. He's, he's benevolent in every aspect of his life. 